Hello and welcome, well, not quite back to the How I Ripped Mm. Off Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast, but to the How I Ripped Off Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast notes, MC. How how fascinating that sounds. (laughs) I am making that title longer and longer. (laughs) What this is basically going to be is it is going to be a mini episode in between the main episodes where we go through the notebook that I found Mm -hmm. from, what, 17, 18 years ago, Mm -hmm. um, where I wrote my notes for each episode. Mm. And I thought we could just have a look around it uh, and through it and all up and down it and just see (laughs) how the original notes colorate, uh, color, color, yeah. To the actual episode we put out there. What a wonderful idea. <laughs> so let's get into it. So here is the notebook, MC. Obviously the listeners aren't going to be able to see it, but could you describe it for them? Okay, well, it's a very battered looking sort of ring spiral bound thing. It says notes on the front. Mm-hmm. The N and the O have been coloured in. I wonder why I never finished that. I, I think maybe you were emphasising no, perhaps? Oh, yes, quite possibly. Or T-E-S? Maybe. There's a weird big smiley face in the bottom left-hand there corner. There is indeed. There's what looks to be a coffee stain or a tea yep, stain. that sounds about right. Some weird mark here. Mm-hmm. That's not to look too no, closely. No, <laughs> better not pick owned that. <laughs> owned by Teenage you after all. <laughs> And I was quite wankery of my own uh, writing, so... Mm, quite literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is quite in good condition, though, for a notebook that's that old, right? Yes, I think that maybe we should carry on with the contents, because I don't <laughs> think people came... <laughs> Let's look at the Tell back! Tell more about what the notebook Whoa, looks look like. look at all these! Yep, the, that the was interesting. Top, <laughs> can I just say what the top thing says? Sure. Fish bite as a name. Yep. So let's peer inside the notebook uh, of joy and wonders. Mm. And as we can see, the first scribblings inside Mm. are the planned events for the episode called SWAT, Mm. which we would have broken down into two parts, but for this it's just one. Mm. So let's see, let's just get into it and see how it compares to the actual episode, shall we? So I always like, uh, I still do this to this day actually, so rather than bullet points, I do little stars, is that what you call them? That's very pretty. Yeah, Yeah, sure, like an asterisk. Yeah, kind of, I don't know why, but it's just just what works for me. Well, I'm glad you found your groove. Maison (laughs) Zer. So it begins. Opens with a gang doing various exercises. Tifa shooting targets in the garden, MC doing mat work, Louise on the bag, Chip doing kata, Jay rocking out in his room. I remember this from when it was uh, fleshed out. Is it interesting to see the... That's very vague, isn't it, in terms of like, Mm. I must have just... It's really bullet pointed in terms of Mm. this is the thing that might be happening. Let's just expand on that as we go into it. Also, not really sure all of those count as exercises. I mean, rocking out, is that an exercise? He was quite tired, Jay, when he was doing it. Yeah, and it was also the joke. Yes. In that everyone else was exercising and he was rocking out. (laughs) Well done, 15-year-old Chip. Hirato watches a team of commandos training. He talks to someone, asking if they are ready for the ninjas. They're not commandos, are they? They're samurais, aren't they? But, I mean, you must have had samurais in mind because you called it SWAT. Unless you came up with that after the fact like originally there was sort of SWAT commando guys and then you were like wait no I think the only reason it's called SWAT is so I could get in that little anachronism right. that I okay. made up <laughs> <laughs> they again get a phone call from someone who has a vampire outside her house it's her husband Chip decides to go and this is what happened Chip does go decide to take on that case doesn't Tell he us. off he goes yep just after they get Just after, they get another phone call from Harato saying he will be there the next day at noon with a special SWAT unit. They are human and well trained. Does he explain that they're human? I thought that was the whole plot twist at the end was that they were, uh, you know, ordinary men that they've just killed. Or is it that he does say they're human but the gang assumes they're all murderers and evil people? Maybe, maybe. But then, I mean, there was a weird thing in Buffy, wasn't there, about how we don't kill humans, Mm. so, you know, Mm. yeah. Now, the next two points are kind of altered because there is an arrow going from one to the other, so I think that means I've kind of switched them around. Okay, but okay. let's see. The next day, Shindo Khan explains the army are modern trained samurais. Ninjas and samurais are mortal enemies that used to be friends until one samurai turned. Okay, well, it seems like he has explained that they are people, but yeah, presumably. Yeah. So. I, I do like, they used to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> used to talk about swords. <laughs> Chip stays at women's house all night. He engages with the vamp, then finds out, as we turn the page, there are two. Her brother? What Chip doesn't know is there are three of them. The third vamp hides in the basement. It's quite confusing. There was one vampire. No, there's two. No, there's three. <laughs> so many vamps. And might be there's a fourth one like hiding in a washing machine or something. 
The gang start to prepare for a fight, but they're not sure if they can kill humans. There is one hour to go. Oh, okay, so they are pre-worn then. They and are, this, did this happen though? I don't... This is the bit where Louise is like, oh, I don't know if I can kill anyone, and MC says, go on then, uh, and yeah. she goes, all right. <laughs> that doesn't seem so much as a debate as like, no, let's just do it. It's like Louise maybe had a bit of a problem until mm. MC was like, nah, go on, and then they were fine. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, that, maybe I changed that slightly as I was going through it. Maybe you couldn't think of a, a reason why they should, <laughs> so you're like, well... <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Chip hears a scream as the woman is in the basement. He runs downstairs and finds she is being turned by her sister. Ooh. Which is different, isn't it? Because yeah, it is her it was all male brother. Vampires. Yeah. But it actually says her brother earlier on in the notes as well. So maybe I gave myself the options for siblings either way. And then was like, no, let's go, brother. Maybe. maybe. Or I just maybe wrote that like a week before and then forgot. Could be. Mm hmm. Chip kills the vamp and chops the woman's head off before she can rise. He feels like he has let her down. He leaves. <laughs> <laughs> when I chop someone's head off, I'm always like, ah, oh, sorry. Could have done better. I think that bullet of that line kind of sums up Chip's morality throughout the season. Yeah, he let much. her down. He leaves. <laughs> <laughs> there is just ten minutes to go and the gang patiently wait. MC gives a rousing speech. Does he? I don't remember that one. <laughs> I, it, it doesn't feel like it was particularly rousing. Mm. Maybe to 15-year-old me it mm. was, but yeah, I don't think <laughs> rousing speeches were my forte back then. <laughs> Chip enters through the back way and makes a noose. He is going to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most teenage angsty line I think I've read so far. I think so. <laughs> Noon comes and goes, and the gang think it's a hoax. At 12.02, the SWAT attack. <gasps> It's interesting to see the, the, the very particular times mm. started off in your notes, clearly. Yeah, I, I don't... Was there a whole thing as to why the SWAT were actually late? Like, it's a weird one. Were they late in the actual... Yeah, yeah, they were. They were like, oh, maybe they it was a hoax and Harato's decided not mm. to, and then they attack. It was like, well, they're just late then. There was nothing to it apart from they were just tardy. I don't know. Maybe it'll come up later. Maybe this is a web you're weaving. <gasps> Two seasons later, it'll be somebody will say, oh, yeah, there was a traffic jam. <laughs> I'll write a lost episode which will what happened in that two minutes. <laughs> Chip hangs himself, full stop. As he is swinging, a SWAT guy takes him down. <laughs> I was a very happy that teenager. Would, would that work? Wouldn't that just... Oh, I guess an injured neck. Yeah. Sure. Sure. The battle with the gang trying not to kill them, but they have to. I don't remember there being that much restraint. And is Oh, the gang is trying not to kill the samurai. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, there really wasn't. They were just shooting them all. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting that I tried to get that across. Failed, yeah. but tried. Yeah. Chip joins the rest of the gang in the lobby. Yep, that happened. They kill about half the SWAT team when Harato enters. The SWAT team falls back and Harato hope they are happy with themselves for killing ordinary humans, which was the plan. The SWAT remove masks. Again, I don't see how this was a, a revelation. <laughs> no, because, well, I mean, again, we might have to go back and listen to that episode as mm. to whether or not they knew they were just ordinary humans at the start and as to why they were reading the masks. There was the, the was awkward thing, thing about, like, but they're evil, born evil. Oh, no, they're not. They're ordinary human beings. But and... you see their face and you're like, oh, no, that's just Tony from the chip shop. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Hirato says it shouldn't be a big deal for Chip. He leaves, leaving the gang murderers and with a home full of bodies. It, it doesn't though, does it? Because they're like, I feel like if a hundred people come to your home to kill you <laughs> and in self-defence you kill some, it's not like, oh, I'm a murderer now. <laughs> oh, but logically, yes, but in their hearts and souls. MC. Okay, sure. Pop sure. Chip. <laughs> the gang burn the bodies in the back garden. They try to convince themselves it was self-defense. It literally was, it though. Was, yeah. <laughs> Chip hides the broken noose, and that's the end of the notes for okay, SWAT. Okay, okay. <laughs> so pretty similar. Like, I don't make a note here, because obviously at the end of that episode, the gang are all in tatters. They're fighting. Mm -hmm. Tifa and MC fall out. Mm -hmm. Louis and Jay are still arguing. Mm -hmm. Chip's, you know, was going to kill himself because he let that woman down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's slightly different. But again, must have kind of weaved that in as I was uh, going along. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, pretty accurate to the actual episode. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see how you go from, from a very short notes to a whole... 15, 15 pages, page. yeah. 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 <laughs> I think I remember trying to make the thing actually was aiming for around 15 pages. Okay. That would be like... Lots of filler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jay's side quest to go have a cheese sandwich. 
that probably existed. Oh, you did exactly. Speaking yeah. of which, MC, yeah. <laughs> let's. We are, normally we're only going to do one, but I think because we're a couple of episodes behind, so with the notes, we'd normally to cover one episode. But mm. today we're going to cover two just mm. to catch up. So we move on to the next episode, Transatlantic. Jay has a dream about his dad. Yep, that's it. In <laughs> in the actual opening of the episode, there's a lot more to that. There is a lot. <laughs> his bit. dad's really abusive and aggressive mm. and scary. There's a treehouse. There's a treehouse and a boat graveyard. Yep. Yep. <laughs> He goes downstairs and everyone is out. He switches on the telly for music channels, but they're not on because of the English elections. Because that's wrote, how Japanese t- <laughs> yeah. TV works. And actually wrote cause instead of because. You did? So, short notes, you know. Chip joins him. Jay lays into him. Bad. Chip nearly threatens him. How do you nearly threaten someone? Why, I oughta... <laughs> Shake the fist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He goes out for lunch, but doesn't have enough to pay, so he runs off without paying. So, out of curiosity, I looked for the most expensive cup of coffee, <laughs> and there was one for £70. Jesus! It's, it's from those animals that eat the coffee bins and then shit them out, and then they... That just makes it worse in my head. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So is that what we think Jay had? Maybe the animals ate the cheese sandwich and shit that out as well. <laughs> <laughs> On the way home, he gets mugged. Back at the mansion, MC is the only one who cares, as Louise and Chip aren't talking to him and Tifa is away. I don't know how Tifa would react if he came to her with like a broken nose, like, oh, I got mugged. She'd be like, what's that? <laughs> she brings him a mug. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Jay, have another one. <laughs> Jay tells MC he wants to go home, and that's where the first part of that uh, one ends, isn't it? Mm. Mm quite good cliffhanger normally part one's a bit rubbish but that was actually a genuine good cliffhanger to end on that one he is worried about being able to afford it so mc gives him the money but that's quite a nice scene in that one because uh, mc actually buys the ticket for him but i thought that was quite sweet i agree i agree he gets the ticket straight away and goes upstairs to pack mc phones tifa to apologize now that is different because it's mm. actually tifa that phones mc that's very true to apologize progressive you see <laughs> the <laughs> woman decided, is sorry <laughs> decided mc is too much of an alpha male <laughs> mc and jay drive to the airport they talk they crash into a demon at the airport's car park mc and jay kill it mc phones louise and asks her to research it pretty accurate that mm-hmm. is what happens but in the actual story they think that they ran over a person for a while yeah, and I like how casual that just kind of happens. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, I've killed someone. Ah, oh, it's a demon. Phew. Or well, they, they just assume he's evil. I mean, they're already murderers, so... <laughs> yeah. Don't want another one on their conscience. Jay and MC have to run to catch his flight. They just make it as the flight is closing up. Jay walks for ages down the jetway until... Hirato and two samurai stop him! Hirato explains to Jay that he is going away, but not home. Jay gets shoved into a portal. He didn't really get shoved, they threw something at him and he kind of fell into it a little bit. Is that what happened? That is what happens, yeah. It's not very... MC takes the demon's body home. Shin no Khan. Ooh, which I've actually shortened to SNK. Ah. Obviously didn't want to have to write out Shin no Khan every time he, meant he appears. That's a uh, secret behind the scenes chat for all our <laughs> amazing fans who are like, oh, my favourite character is SNK because he's so good with people. Is that his rapper's name? <laughs> It's a door demon, named because they open up doors to other worlds. My most, obviously at my creative peak here as a 15 year old, coming up with that one. Jay is now on a ship as a crew member, having to fight pirates. And that is where Transatlantic ends, and that's pretty much where we are with the notes. Yeah. So this is quite interesting. I like looking back at these. It's, it's less kind of racist and sexist than the actual main bulk of the text which we have to read. You add that in as a kind of seasoning. <laughs> Mate, can we just read these from now on instead of doing the actual episodes? Is that okay? I'm, I'm worried about what the other episodes are like. I'm sure there's <laughs> some terrible things written in this notebook. Oh, let's not look through all of it. That's why I might have some of my inner thoughts, which we don't oh, want to get Lord, into. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us for the first episode of The Notes. Um, we look forward to seeing you next time. Come and make sure you subscribe to the podcast podcast reach out to us and all the socials come say hello and we'll see you for the main podcast on a monday Mm -hmm. and uh, midweek for when the notes go out Mm. 